Jesus. You're so worthy. You're so worthy. I'm going to ask you to open your Bibles tonight. Open your Bibles tonight. To Isaiah 58. God is moving in a very, very special way. He's moving in a very special way. I feel your hunger increasing. Do you feel? Do you feel your hunger increasing? I can, I can feel your hunger increasing. That's what makes it hard for us to move forward in the service because your hunger is increasing. And the more that your hunger, this is how um, over the generations when there has been a mighty outpouring and, and a mighty revival, uh, most of the time there is not a lot of preaching, there is not a lot of teaching because when the people uh, come together, there is such a deep work of the Holy Spirit that um, people just stay in that place of worship for hours, not needing music, not needing uh, all of the extra things that we feel like we need to do church effectively. All of those things just kind of go out the window. People forget about the fact that their favorite TV show comes on. People forget about uh, what they had to do after church and they just get so enraptured in the presence of God and in worship that they just lay out in the presence of God and the next thing you know people are getting healed and delivered and, and then people begin to get up out of wheelchairs and crutches are released and let go of people's bodies and souls and, and their, their emotions are being healed and being set free that's what revival looks like and then it's something that pours out into the streets. It's something that pours out into the community. It's not something that just stays in the four walls. It's something that people begin to hear about throughout the world and people will be drawn to those places that are an open portal for revival and for a move of God. And I believe with all my heart that Rainfire Church is one of those places that God has designated for there to be an open window uh, in heaven for just a direct outpour of the Holy Spirit, a direct outpour of power of anointing, of glory, of deliverance. And this is the reason why we have to value this time of teaching because when the glory comes, we have to know how to respond to it. When the glory comes, we have to know how to respect it. When the glory of the Lord we, no, comes, we have to we have to know how to how to honor it and how to usher it and how to allow it to remain. Because many times, because people don't know, the glory comes, but then because it is not respected, it doesn't stay. We want the glory to come and we want it to stay. We want, God, we want your glory to come and we want it to remain in us. We want it to come and we don't want it to just be a fad of a season, but we want it to come and to remain upon us, oh God. To the point that we become mobile carriers of revival, mobile carriers of glory, that, that glory that just that rests upon us. That everywhere that we go, that anointing, that revival, that reformation, that transformation that happens in the spirit goes with us. I perceive great things happening in the spirit. And we receive it. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We're going into the new year. And many people out of tradition will fast as they go into the new year. Many people out of tradition, this is what we do, we're going into new year. And we will fast. We will fast corporately. I, I still have not gotten direction from God how we will fast. Um, but there are many of you that did the fast uh, of 2015, where we did a Daniel fast, where I believe it was the first 40 days of the year. And I would say the majority of the people that really followed through with that fast, their lives were never the same. There were so many of you that you're still reaping the benefits of that spiritual encounter because it's been unfolding for you all year. And so what we want to do is we want to go into this season of fasting and of seeking God with understanding. We want to go into this season of seeking God and fasting uh, with revelation. We don't want to do it out of habit. We want to do it with revelation because it, imagine, think about where we are right now. What we've experienced in this church from the time this church began, I mean, there, there, there was one time, and some of you were here, where we literally heard the wind of the Holy Spirit blowing in this room to the point where you could hear it coming through the speakers. It recorded on tape. We have it on tape. 
where you can audibly hear the wind of the Spirit. If God always supersedes himself, if God always goes from glory to glory, then that means that we have yet to see what God wants to do here. Next year is going to make this year look like a poor year. Next year is going to make this year look like, like nothing. Because when you stay focused, see, so keep in mind, everything that needed to be done for us was already done on the cross of Calvary. So we determine our altitude. Did you hear me? God doesn't determine your altitude. You determine your altitude. I determine my altitude by my lifestyle, by my obedience to God, by my life of worship, uh, by my life of fasting, of prayer. And it's important to know that we have to make fasting a part of our lives, okay? So I don't know how you will decide in 2016 what will be your regular uh, uh, commitment to fasting. You may say, I, I'm going to fast once a week on this day, you know, till 2 in the afternoon. Or I'm going to fast from social media every Wednesday. Or I'm going to, however it is that the Lord leads you to fast so that we are uh, we're, we're paying attention and we're listening because a lot of amazing things happen when you fast. Right. And we're going to talk about that tonight. We're going to talk about what happens when you fast. What happens when we fast. Go with me to Isaiah 58 verse 6. Isaiah 58 verse 6 and I'll be teaching tonight. Isaiah 58 verse 6. Now, God was addressing the people, because it had gotten to the point where the people were fasting for show. Wow. Wow. They were not fasting out of revelation. They were not fasting because they were in love with God and wanted to know God. But they were fasting for show. They were fasting to be recognized. They were fasting basically out of religious duty. And they were not fasting in a way that was pleasing to God. So God begins to address them regarding their fasting how um, that when they were fasting, they were only fasting for their own pleasure. So to be seen by people, to be acknowledged by people, uh, you know, being very public with their display of, you know, the sackcloth and the ashes so that everybody could look at them and say, oh, they're so spiritual. And the Lord is like, look, when you're fasting, you need to wash your face, you need to put on your makeup, you need to look good, you don't need to, hey, how you doing to go oh, fasting? No. You got to get yourself together. It's nobody's business that you're fasting. I mean, of course, we'll know because we'll be fasting as a corporate family. But they were fasting for the wrong reasons. And God was bringing correction to them. And then in verse 6, the Lord says this, is not this the fast that I chose to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the straps of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke. As a church, we have to understand that we cannot erase the need for fasting and prayer. I know that it's by grace. I know that we're saved by grace and I know that it's not by works. You will, yes, get to heaven by the grace of God. You cannot earn your way into heaven. You are saved by grace. But if you do not make prayer and fasting a lifestyle, there is the possibility that the devil can kick your hind parts all throughout your life and you never get victory over him. That's not the way God wants us to live. God doesn't want you bound by pornography. God doesn't want you bound by lying. God doesn't want you bound by fear. God does not want you uh, suffering from depression every three weeks to the point of thoughts of suicide. That's not what God has for you. That is not what Jesus paid for. So there are keys and there are principles and there are things in the word of God uh, that I bring to you uh, praying that the Holy Spirit will make these things alive in your heart so you understand the responsibility that you have as a believer. 
Okay? The grace of God is, uh, it, it's, it's like a rope that is extended to you. It, it's almost like if somebody is drowning and they throw them a lifesaver. The lifesaver is grace. So the lifesaver allows you not to drown. It's the grace. It's the grace that extends the rope in order for you to have the opportunity to be saved. But how many of you know that if you don't grab that lifesaver, if you don't grab on to the rope, if you don't allow yourself to be saved, you can't be saved. That's why it says that in the Bible, you must uh, declare in your heart. You must believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. It also says that you, you must confess your sin. Okay? And he said if you're faithful to confess it, he'll be faithful to forgive. Yeah. Then he also said, without holiness, no man shall see God. Yeah. So the drunkard and the liar and the thief and the adulterer, and, and, and the list goes on and on. He says, if you are not holy, you are not going to see me. So you can't tell me I'm all good and I can do whatever I want because of grace. But then the Bible is telling me without holiness, no man shall see God. Now, the balance of all of that is that you can't make yourself holy. The one that makes you holy is the Holy Spirit. So when you engage in a relationship with him and you de uh, develop, you develop um, uh, an appetite for him, then he's able to fill you. And the more he fills you, the more he flushes out the junk, which allows you to live holy. It's that simple. You can't do it in your own strength, but with his help, you can do it. And fasting and prayer, but especially fasting, is one of those amazing tools that the Lord gave us. Because he knows and he understands that when you give your heart to Jesus, your spirit is renewed immediately. Immediately, your spirit is saved. But your emotions and your mind and your flesh, Lord Jesus, help me today. It takes a little longer for the rest of you to get converted. Can I get a witness? Is there anybody in here that is honest? Listen. It takes a minute. That's the process of sanctification. That's the process of sanctification. That's why I say all the time, when you fall short, run back to the cross. When you fall short, run back to the blood. Stay connected. Don't let the guilt and the condemnation keep you from church or keep you from the prayer closet. Or He already knows what you did. Just come on back and just get it right. Help me, Holy Spirit. That needs to be your conversation. So Isaiah 58 verse 8 says in regard to this fast and the power of fasting and what happens when we fast. It says then. The Bible is full of thens. Okay. If you seek me, then you'll find me. If you knock, then the door will be open. There has to be something that we do in order to cause a reaction. There has to be an action that causes a reaction. Okay? So it's almost like you got to see it like this. There's there's like this big, uh, uh, there's a piñata. Have you ever been to a birthday party? Okay? If nobody grabs the stick and hits the piñata, does the candy come down? No. But many of us are sitting under the piñata saying, hey, God, would you please just, I want some candy. And he's like, hey, you, would you please just grab the stick and hit the piñata. Okay? So the things that we do are the action in order to get the reaction that God has said will happen if we do what he tells us to do. So he's saying that when you fast, then shall your light break forth like the dawn. That's promotion. And your healing shall spring up speedily. Your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. If you need somebody to have your back, let's talk about the glory of the Lord being your rear guard. Yes. And then verse 9 says, then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry and he will say, here I am. Yes. I could stop right there. Yes. I really could stop right there. Because to understand that there is something that I have the power to make a decision to do that causes God to allow my light to break forth like the dawn. It allows my healing to spring up speedily, not just, uh, not in this time, but speedily. That, that allows my righteousness to go before me, that allows uh, the glory of the Lord to be my rear guard. And then on top of all of that, he's saying, when you fast, all you have to say is, Lord, and he says, here I am. That is so powerful. Something that I can do that allows him to say, Joanne, here I am. What are we going to do with this new year? 
Joanne, here I am. How are we going to deal with these finances? Joanne, here I am. How are we going to deal with your children? Joanne, here I am. What is it that you need me to do for you? I know that you have some dreams and some visions that I've placed in you. And hey, here, here, here's some strategy for you. Joanne, here I am. And we've already learned that when he comes, he brings everything with him. So we have to look at this season of going into a season, you know, yes, I know you have to eat your Christmas turkey and your Christmas ham and you got to do all the things that you do for Christmas and that's fine. But once we go into the new year, you got to renew your mind and say, okay, it's time to get on task. It's time to get focused. Not just because it's the beginning of the year. Not just because it's the beginning of the year. But there's something about the way God made us that we mark moments in time. It's just the way God made us. He's not like that, but we're like that. He moves in seasons, not really by the calendar. We have a little bit more of a calendar mentality. And for some reason, emotionally and mentally, when we come into a new year, we have been convinced that something new happens in the new year. We are convinced that all the bad things that happened in the old uh, year, they're not going to come with me into the new year. And I think, oh, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So because you think, hey, it's a new year, there's new things coming my way, immediately everything about you lines up with that which causes it to come into play. So in uh, union with that, we want to add that element of fasting because we want to be able to go into this year with strategy. We want to be able to go into the year with strategy. What's one of the things that uh, happens, that happens when you fast, okay? You cannot fast to change God's mind. Do not fast to change God's mind. Okay? I'm almost about to sound like, what is this thing called worship? Remember when I said worship is not this worship? Okay, fasting is not a way to twist God's arm to do what you want him to do. Fasting is not a way to convince God to, you know, for whatever. Fasting is not even, I mean, it's, it's not a tool of manipulation. Fasting is not really about getting more anointed. Okay? Fasting is a tool that has been given to us, number one, to take to help take our focus off of the natural world right. so that we disconnect from the distractions, okay? You have to disconnect from the distractions, from temptations, from limitations. You have to disconnect. We're constantly plugged in. And when you're plugged in, you're eating. Does that make sense? Yes. So when you're on Facebook, you're eating every image that you scroll. And you scroll, and you scroll, and you scroll, and you scroll, and you, scroll and, you scroll, and you look at what everybody's doing. And every once in a while, about every five or seven pictures, there's something that's borderline pornographic. And you're feeding yourself. Oh, it got real quiet. I'm okay with that. You're constantly, you're constantly eating. You're, you're eating from every conversation you have. You're eating from the TV shows that you watch. You're eating from the things that you read. You're, you're eating from the news. That spirit of fear and that spirit of terror, that spirit that makes you feel depressed like the world is just getting worse and worse every day. You're feeding. You're constantly feeding. So because you understand this, you have to, as a believer, make a conscious decision periodically to say, I am disconnected. I have to disconnect. I have to detox. Everybody talks about detox, right? I got to detox my body. I got to go and I got to do this special lemonade diet to detox because it's important to detox. And there's free radicals everywhere. And everybody's worried about the free radicals, but ain't nobody worried about sin. We don't need to detox from sin. Come on now. Free radicals, the free radicals, listen, you need to detox your spirit and your soul. So fasting is a part of that. It helps to disconnect you from everything that is going on. And I really, really do believe that television and, and limited access to social media will have to be a part of our fasting in January. I'm not trying to hurt you. But I want you to thrive. I want to thrive. I want to walk in power. I want to walk in authority. So this is one of the things that fasting does. It disconnects us. It helps you to take your focus off of everything that's going on around you and help you to put your focus on the things that are eternal, the things that are going on with God. It helps you to put your eyes on the kingdom of God. It helps you, Father, oh, I thank you. It just it helps focus you on the things of God. What's the second thing that happens when you're fasting, there's an exchange of natural hunger for spiritual hunger. Now listen, let me explain this. There's, a, there's an exchange of natural hunger for spiritual hunger. If you fast, okay, but you don't change anything else about your lifestyle, you just stop eating, all you're doing is starving yourself. All you're doing, you cannot say, I am, I'm, you might as well just say, I'm going to go on a diet. 
or I'm on a hunger strike. Because if you don't change anything else about, you know, you have to look at it like this. When I decide to come into a fast, I am exchanging and I'm putting to the side my natural hunger. In other words, when I'm hungry, I go into the kitchen and make myself a sandwich. When I'm hungry, I go into uh, McDonald's and order whatever. When you're hungry, you, you respond to that hunger by feeding your body. When you go into a fast, you have to respond to your hunger by feeding your spirit. Does this make sense? So you make a conscious decision every time you feel hungry, press into the things of the spirit. Every time you feel hungry, you, you have to exchange you have to exchange what you're eating. You're putting aside the natural food, but not just to starve yourself. But to replace that natural food with spiritual food. So when you are fasting, Yes, the TV has to go off. When you're fasting, it's not the time to be reading a Harlequin romance novel. When you're fasting, it's not the time to do, you know, just friv frivolous things. It's the time to focus on feeding your spirit. An intense time of feeding your spirit. That means all the time, word, all the time, worship. If you, if, and I prefer... I don't need you to go and say, oh, Pastor, I, I fasted for four days. It's not about the time. I prefer you give me a quality fast than a quantity fast. Yes. You hear what I'm saying? Because a lot of times we can get you, we can get called, you know, caught up in all, you know, the drama of, well, I, you know, we, we wear it like pins, like pins on our, you know, on our chest. I, I, I fasted 40 days. I fasted 21 days. I fasted, I mean, people do that. But it's not about that. Yes, the Lord can lead you into a prolonged fast. He can say, Latez, I want you to fast uh, four days. Or Henry, I want you to do, you know, three days or whatever. But it's not just out of emotion or about getting a pat on the back. It's about having a quality time with God because you just want more of him. Yes. Not because you're trying to get something from him. Not because you're trying to change his mind about the fact that he told you that guy is not the one. So I think I'm going to fast because if I fast, uh -oh, the devil don't like what we say. <laughs> the devil don't like what we say. <laughs> you got some batteries? So you exchange. You have to exchange. Right. There has to be that exchange. And you have to feed your spirit more than you feed your flesh. So you got to right. cut all that stuff off. You got to right. cut all that other stuff off. So you're making an exchange. Number three, understand that when you're fasting, when you're fasting, your, your spirit is freed and it is delivered and it, it opens you to hear the voice of God. Many times when people need direction, when they need a new direction, when you're when you're coming to a crossroad and you don't know which way God wants you to go, right. it's a great idea to go into a fast. Right. It's a wonderful idea to go into a fast because God himself will give you direction on what it is that he wants you to do. He'll either give you peace about that thing or he won't give you peace about it. Right. It, it allows you to hear God. Yeah. I don't know what it is, but it almost seems like the weaker your flesh is, the stronger your spirit becomes. Right. That's good. The apostle good. said, he said what? In my weakness, yes, your strength yes, Lord, is made perfect. Yes. Right? Yes. And I don't know what it is, but it's almost like, why is it that people are the most creative when they're high? <laughs> <laughs> you hear about singers all the time, right? That they'll go into the studio and they won't sing in the studio unless they're high. Mm -hmm. Because they feel like they, they, uh, you know, they throw away all their inhibitions and they throw away all their shyness and suddenly they can be free mm -hmm. because the flesh is weak right. and their soul or whatever right. demon is working through them <laughs> is able to come out. Right. It's almost like the flesh or our body, thank you, Dravius, has certain types of inhibitors. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 It has certain type of inhibitors that stop us, thank you, that stop us uh, from being freer. A lot, of, a lot of us have those inhibitors in worship. Yeah. Yeah. We're so afraid to look foolish that we miss out on worship opportunities because of, because of that, those, those inhibitors. Yeah. Okay? And I don't know what it is that God made uh, that connection. It's almost like the weaker your flesh is, it's, it's, it's all, I, I don't know how to explain it. 
But the weaker your flesh is from fasting, the more your spirit is able. It's almost like, you know, flesh, you are finally out of the way. You're not stopping me from doing what I got to do. You're not stopping me from connecting to God. You're not stopping me. You're not in the way so that the spirit man can rise up. This is the reason why I tell you guys all the time, starve your flesh and feed your spirit. Because whoever is stronger is going to win. You cannot watch borderline R-rated movies that are almost porn and think it's going to be easy to have a holy uh, thought life. Because the enemy is going to bring those images back to your mind all the time. You'll be having a conversation with the, one of the nicest girls at church. And all of a sudden, you just see that last movie that you saw. And instead of the, the star's face, you see the girl's face on the bottom. I mean, it'll just mess you all up. Because you've been feeding yourself that thing. Okay? You have to starve your flesh in nat uh, naturally, spiritually. You know, with the things that you consume with your eyes and with your ears, and you have to feed your spirit. It's just, it's just the way it is. So you want to keep, uh, especially in the time of fasting, your flesh becomes weak because you're not giving it television, you're not giving it food, you're not giving it. You know, some of you may may just uh, may just uh, fast from sweets, or may fast from soda, or may fast from sugar. You will see in about two days how your body will start fighting against you. Have you ever had that experience? Yes. I, I remember the first time I did a Daniel fast. I would rather do an, a water only fast than a Daniel fast. Because when I was doing the first time I did a Daniel fast, I tell you, I had a headache, I promise you, for about four days. It was the most horrible headache I had ever had in my life. That was my flesh fighting me. How dare you take away my, my chocolate? How dare you take away my sugar? My Reese's peanut butter cups. How dare you? Your flesh will fight you. But you have to break it because you know what it is? It's a stronghold. It's a stronghold. And you want to make sure that you are doing whatever you got to do to break every stronghold. Okay? When your spirit, when your spirit is free, it, it's open. You can hear the voice of God. You're able to hear direction because that spirit man is rising up. That spirit man is rising up in you. What's number four? Number four, when you fast, your faith is fertilized and energized. When you fast, your faith is fertilized and energized. I'm not saying that fasting produces faith because the word of God tells us that faith comes by hearing and hearing uh, comes by the word of God. But when you uh, are receiving the word of God while you're fasting and because you're spending increased time instead of doing other things, you're spending increased time in prayer and you're spending increased time in the presence of God, just loving God, just reading the word. You don't even have to go into your fast with specific requests. How about I just want to be with you? I just want to be where you are. That's a good enough reason to fast. I'm not trying to fast because I need you to pay my bills. I'm not trying to fast because I need you to give me an answer. He may do all of those things. And if you do it for me, thank you. But how about just going into a fast because I just want to know you. I just want to, I, I want to sit and read your word. And I want it to feel like you're reading it to me. I, I just want to be that close to you. So that I can look more like you. So when you're in the presence of God, when you're spending that time with him, it's very, very important because that faith, that seed of faith, there are a lot of things and, and a lot of seeds that have been sown in your spirit over the years that are waiting for the right conditions to burst forth. Does this make sense? Every word, every word, every time you have read the Bible, every word that you have heard, the preached word of God. Every time that you have, you know, gotten a prophetic word, those are seeds that have been put in the ground of your spirit. And if you, after you receive that word, if you never spend any more time with Jesus, if you never spend any more time in worship, it's almost like putting a seed in the ground but never watering it. Does this make sense? I, I believe that there was um, an archaeological expedition and they brought forth uh, out of uh, one of the uh, mummy cases and they found seeds. They found seeds. And do you know when they took those seeds and they planted them and they watered them, the seeds must have been thousands of years old, but they brought forth life. It was dormant. It was dormant because it had not been activated. 
When we go into this season of fasting, there are things that are dormant that are going to become activated by the Spirit and the presence of God. Because you're creating an atmosphere in your spiritual life. You are bringing the right type of fertilization to your ground. You're bringing the right type of water into, into that seed so that seed can be nourished and suddenly that seed is going to spring forth. So this is something that happens when you fast. Look at this. When you fast, this is number five. So number one, you take your focus off the natural world with its distractions. Number two, there's an exchange of natural hunger for spiritual hunger. Number three, when you, uh, your spirit is free to open uh Free and open to hear the voice of God. Number four, your faith is fertilized and energized. And number five, your prayer is expanded in its operation. Your prayer becomes more effective. Your prayers become more effective when you fast. So when you fast and you pray at the same time and you do those things together, there is a new dimension of power that is released and attached to your prayer. Now, remember when, uh, I think it was the disciples that had been with Jesus and then they wanted to go off and be big shots and they were trying to deliver somebody from a demon and they went and they tried to do the whole in the name of Jesus come out, in the name of Jesus come out, and they didn't come out, the devils did not come out. And they came back to Jesus and say, why is it we did what you told us to do? We followed the formula, Lord. We followed the three steps. Why didn't it work? You know what? Because everything in life and everything in the things of the spirit is not just three steps. I can't give you three steps to overcoming addiction. I can't give you just three steps to overcome this, that, or whatever. There are things that are not going to budge and they're not going to shift until you fast and pray. He said, look guys, I'm sorry. But some things only budge, some things will only come out through fasting and prayer. They were trying to piggyback somebody else's anointing. They were trying to pick, but they didn't have their own relationship with Jesus. I mean, with the Father. They did not pray the way he prayed. They were busy falling asleep, as we remember in the Garden of Gethsemane, right? Yeah. But he was saying, if you want this kind of power where your prayer is going to be more effective, you have to fast and pray. There are certain things that are locked up in your life that in this season of fasting, they're just going to come loose. Okay? Salvation of husbands, salvation of family members, healing in your body, different things that are a bondage in your life that in this season of fasting, that fasting and that prayer will come together and the prayer will become more powerful and more effective. Why? Because of the power of fasting. Because this is why I'm telling you, we should and need to make fasting a part of our regular life. Because you want to be, we don't want to just access this power in January. Right? Nope. We want to have a constant access to this power at consistent times in our lives. And know when you see things locking themselves up, things that you know that God has spoken, things that you know God has said is to come to fast, to pass, there's nothing wrong with going into a season of fasting and prayer and saying, uh uh, this thing is going to be loosed in the name of yes. Jesus. Amen. When you know of, of a friend or somebody who used to walk so closely with God and suddenly they turn their back on God for whatever reason, it's like, hold on, wait a minute. And they seem to be blind. You can begin to fast and to pray in order to break that thing. Fasting is a powerful, powerful tool. It's a powerful tool. Look at number six and we'll be done very soon. Things that you've been believing for and confessing begin to manifest. There are things that you have believed and confessed in 2015 that will be manifested in January of 2016 Amen. because of our engagement with the fasting. Because we engage in fasting and we set aside that time to separate, to separate ourselves from everything, we're going to see things springing forth. It may be jobs. It may be opportunities. I mean, you started fasting again, right? When did you start fasting again? Sometime in November. How long have you been looking for a job, like a per like a steady job? About three years. So you basically for three years been doing different temp jobs in order to provide for your family. Come and tell them what happened to you today. Come on, come on. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. She called me. She said, Shay, 
Well, first time what God told you this morning about your ten oh. God told me to quit. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, like that. <laughs> and he said, don't go. And I said, okay. Like that. I obeyed him. I didn't go. I went to the temp service and told him that the job wasn't going to be a fit for me. And and she was like, for real, Shanae? She said, you don't want this? I said, no, ma'am. I said, I'm done. Like that. So about 4.30, 5 o'clock, I was on my way to church. And the lady called me. She said, Shay, I have an administrative position available for you. She said, do you want it? And I said, she said, full benefits, everything. Hey. <laughs> She first came to be a part of Green Fire Church. She's been faithful with her giving. She's been faithful with serving. She's been faithful with her tithing. And then when God, it wasn't even January, God began to deal with her in November about going back into a fasting lifestyle. And she was obedient. And then on top of that, this morning, that temp job that she had was temp to hire. Mm -hmm. So there was the possibility of being hired. So how are you going to say, okay, I don't want this temp job without the assurance of another job? And I'm not, I'm not saying to anybody do that. But she clearly heard God speak to her. Yeah. And, but why was she able to hear? Because she's been fasting and praying. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So we're getting ready to go into a very, very exciting yeah. season and time. Because it's almost like everything that God has been doing in the spirit. Like we've been feeling it in the services. We've been feeling that increased weight of glory. Yeah. We've been feeling that increased power of the Holy Spirit. I mean, it's been sometimes to the point where we can almost, we can't even contain ourselves. We can't contain our worship. We can't contain our dance. We can't contain, I mean, we got people running around the church because it's almost like this expectation that you can, you can hardly keep it in. And I really believe that as we obey the word of God and we go into this fast, that those things, those things that we have shouted about are going to manifest those things that we have declared, we're going to see with our eyes. Those things that we have believed for, we'll be able to touch them with our hand. And we'll no longer need our faith for those things because it will already be manifested. In the spirit, we know it's already done. But there's a difference between it being done and it being manifested. The fasting allows it to be manifested. Okay? So things that you have been believing for and confessing begin to manifest when you fast. Number seven, you receive peace and rest, the rest of God, and you're able to believe God without limits. There's something about fasting that no matter hell or high water can come, and you can be in a fast, and you just have this peace. It's almost like fasting uh, puts your emotions in check. Because what gets us in trouble a lot of times is our emotions. We make decisions when we're emotional. We make decisions because we're upset. We make decisions because, you know, someone so hurt my feelings, so I'm out of here. We make decisions based on our emotions. And it's almost like when you're fasting, all it's like your emotions are almost like very non-responsive because you're so weak. Yeah. Because you just want, you know, a Snickers. Okay? You, you want to eat whatever you want to eat. And it's hard to have to go into the grocery store and just pick up the spinach and the bananas. And I buy it. Oh, my God, I don't want to see another banana. I mean, you get to that point where you just don't want to see another piece of fruit because you're so done. Yes. You're so done with it. But there's something about just how it causes those things that you've been believing God for to manifest because your emotions are not running rampant. You're not making decisions based on your emotions. And so that, that is kind of taken out of the equation and you're able to rest and have peace. And in that rest and in that peace, even though there may be chaos going on around you, it's almost like you're in the eye of the tornado and everything around you is going crazy, but in the eye, right in the middle of it, there's perfect peace and you're able to think clearly. Does this make sense? Yes. 
Okay, Holy Spirit, if you're sleeping with somebody, there's no way for you to be able to hear from God to know if that person is your husband or your wife or if they're just a counterfeit. There's no way. Why? Because you're, you're entangled in a way that is inappropriate, so you're not able to hear clearly. Does this make sense? He told me to do, he just told me to say that. I don't know who that's for. But you you can't hear you can't hear clearly when you're angry. Right. You can't hear clearly from God when you're mad. You can't hear. So you can't make decisions at those moments. You have to get in that place of rest. You have to get in that place where you just you're resting in him and that fasting allows the emotional part of you to just get somewhere and sit down. And it allows you to hear God and you have that peace. And it's very, very important, especially when it's time for crucial decisions. Right. You have to have that rest and that peace. Okay? Now, number eight, and we only have ten tonight. Number eight is even though you catch the enemy's attention, because you do, when you begin to fast, you catch the enemy's attention. But don't let that get you uh, nervous. Because also what happens when you're fasting is that angels are dispatched to minister to your needs. Angels are released to minister to your needs. Do you remember when the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit took Jesus into the wilderness yeah. and he fasted for 40 days? Yeah. And during that time is when he was tempted by Satan. You know the story. But after he overcame the temptation, it says that the angels came and ministered to his flesh. Yeah. Yeah. Do you realize that the angels, they, the angels have the power to bring finances to you? Yeah. Angels have the power to bring opportunity to you. Angels have the power. Many of your angels are sitting around completely bored because you have not activated them ever. <laughs> they just, they, uh, they, would somebody give me some work to do? <laughs> I talk to them all the time. I teach my daughters to talk to them. And now we don't worship angels. Okay, we don't idolize angels. But we understand that angels are the servants of God. So God, Father, release the angels to bring the money. Father, release the angels to protect my children. Father, release the angels. But when, when you fast, they come and they strengthen you. They come to minister to you. God immediately releases them. Because I think that God loves when we're not so strong. I don't know why. But I think that when we're super strong and we think we got it all together, that pride and that thinking we got it all together gets in the way of us relying on him in a way that he wants us to rely on him. Does that make sense? So it's almost like when we're obedient to his word, like Jesus was, and we're willing to go into those seasons of fasting and of prayer because we love him. We want to be in his will. We want to walk according to his will. We don't want to miss the moment. We don't want to miss what he's saying, right? I don't want to miss what he's saying. We want to be able to uh, to adjust our temperament in order to be who he needs us to be for the next season. Some of y'all going to have to leave your smart mouth in 2015. <laughs> I'm serious. Some of you are going to have to leave your, 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 you know, your pop and attitude in 2015 because for where you're going is not appropriate. For where you're going, you, you're not going to be able to have the, well, I got to tell it how I feel, but I got I to let you know how I feel. God is saying, uh-uh, for where I'm trying to take you, that's not going to, that's not going to cut it. The word of God says a fool says all his thoughts. That's a fool. But a wise man, if you want to be considered wise, shut your mouth. And that's not being dishonest, but it's, it's being a person of wisdom. Not everything has to be said. And there are certain things in our character, in our personality, and in the way that we may have been raised or the community. I mean, I was raised as a Puerto Rican in Chicago. Are you kidding me? It's like, I went to that high school where, you know, the girls were taking the razor blades out of their hair and fighting. And, you know, what, who are you looking at? And all that. I was raised around all of that. But when I came into the things of God, he has to strip me of those things because for where I, I can't be sitting at the White House and Michelle looking at me like, what you looking at? I can't, you understand what I'm saying? For where I'm going or for whatever it is that God has for me, I can't take Shirley's High School from Chicago on the north side, public school attitude into the purpose and the destiny that God has for me. I couldn't take that attitude in, in my marriage, into my marriage, if I wanted my marriage to last. Now it tries to resurrect every once in a while, but then we gotta fast a little bit more. Because you can't take it with you. So that fasting, it will, it will alter, it will alter those things in you that need to be altered. 
okay? We're living in a generation where there is more sexual perversion than, than probably has ever been because there's so much access to it. There's so, so know that when you go into fasting, it also helps to detox, okay? A lot of people cannot control, in the same way that they cannot control their eating habits, they're not able to control their sex drive. And the Spirit of God, when you receive the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is supposed to give, bring forth in us the spirit of self-control. Right. So the spirit of self-control, if we learn how to control our body when it comes to eating, it will help us to learn how to control our, our sexual appetites as well. Right. You know, and, and people may say, um, well, I'll be all right once I get married. It, it, won't be a, it won't be an issue when you think that getting married is going to fix the problem. Getting married doesn't fix the problem. You have to develop this spirit of self-control before you get married. Okay? Because having a, a spouse doesn't mean you're going to be getting it all the time you want to get it. So you're still going to have to have, am I keeping it too real? Yeah. You still have to develop a spirit of self-control. So the same self-control that you need to not do inappropriate things on the internet or not do inappropriate things by yourself, all that self-control sometimes begins with learning how to control your eating, okay? Because it's all connected to your flesh. And many times we're, we're very quick, we're very quick to judge people when they lack self-control in sexual areas, but, we're, but he said, do not be gluttonous. So all of those things are connected. Yeah. How did I get on that? I don't even know. Okay. Um, the angels are dispatched to minister to your needs. Number nine, you feel physically renewed, strengthened, and your health comes forth when you fast. It has been medically proven that when you take time to fast, even just for, not for spiritual reasons, but when you just fast as a regular part of your life, your body is renewed. Literally, your body is renewed. Uh, there's sickness that is that is broken off when you fast. There's sickness that is broken off when you fast. So you have to know that there is um, a rejuvenation right. process that is con connected to fasting. So you're rejuvenating and you're empowering your spirit, but also your body. Right. Your body is being rejuvenated. Your body, and it says it right there in Isaiah 58, 58 verse 8. It says, and your healing shall spring up speedily. Your healing. A lot of times, uh, people that have uh, cancer or different diseases, they will go into certain hospitals and they will uh, cause them to eat certain types of diet in order to uh, cause their body to regenerate yeah. naturally. Okay, without the chemotherapy and all of that, it, it can it will renew your body. So believe God with me that as you go into this time of fasting in the new year, that po possible, that very possibly. Uh, health issues that you have had will, will no longer be. Because he says, he said that your healing shall spring forth speedily. And number 10, with this I close, fasting, something that happens when you fast is that you return in the power of the Holy Spirit to minister the grace of God to others. <laughs> Jesus didn't do a miracle until he returned from that time of fasting. When he received the Holy Spirit, he was drawn by the Spirit into the desert he was tempted, he fasted for 40 days, but when he came back, he came back, not by himself, but he came back in power. Yeah. He came back with a power that he didn't have before he fasted. Yes. And I believe that, you know, it's almost like, I don't know, have you ever had, have you ever gone somewhere where they have, um, you know, it usually takes about what, you know, four or five hours to charge your phone, but they have these stations in the airport and you can pay $5 and plug in your phone and for five minutes you'll charge and you'll get the charge of five hours and five minutes. It's almost like a speed charge station. Fasting is a speed charge station for your spirit. Okay? Because it's almost like you're going into overdrive in the things of God. You're going into overdrive and all you're consuming is like you're getting your flesh out of the way. You're getting your emotions out of the way. You're getting this super direct connection with the Spirit of God. All the distractions are gone. You can hear clearly and there is power that is released from the Holy Spirit that you need for the next place that you're going. There are things that, that will be download in, downloaded into your spirit yeah. during your fast that you will see unfolding for the rest of the year. You'll see it unfolding for the rest of the year. You won't know when it happened, but you'll know because like Miss Margaret and I were talking and we the time to fast and the time to pray is not when you have a problem. 
when the tragedy or the situation hits, you can't, okay, well, hold on. I got to pray real quick. Father God, I ask you right now in the name of Jesus that you will help me, Lord Jesus, and give me the strength that I need. No, because things happen so fast. You want to stay prayed up. You want to be fasted up and prayed up and ready so that when you're driving and that car comes out of nowhere, when you say, Jesus, there's power in that Jesus to stop that accident from happening. I've been in that position. I know what that feels like. You want to be able to see what's getting ready to happen and call on the name of the Lord and know that because you have a reservoir of prayers and a reservoir of fasting and a reservoir of power, I don't wait for a bad day to begin praying. I pray on the good days. I pray on the bad days. I pray on the days when we got a lot of money. I pray on the days that we may not have no money. I pray on the days that I'm happy. I pray on the days I'm sad. I pray on the days I'm angry. I pray on the, whatever day it is. I live in a place of prayer. Why? Because I understand I got to stay filled up. I don't know what's going to happen on any given day. And I know that you can pray at any time. But try to pray in the morning. Do your best to become disciplined. In spending that time in the morning. Set aside that time during the week. You know, where you say, and for everybody it's a different thing. I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm only going to get on social media from this time to this time to do whatever business I got to do. Because honestly, we'll be on there and, you, and 20 minutes will go by and you just be sitting there scrolling. Oh, like, 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 oh, I don't like, like, you know. And the next thing you know, 45 minutes have gone by. And you you commenting on everybody's status on what everybody's doing. But let me say, oh, we're going to pray for 30 minutes. Oh, oh that's too long. <laughs> because we have an appetite for the things of the world, but we don't have an appetite for the things of God. We want to have an appetite. We want to develop. Go ahead and lift your hands with me right now. Come on, we're going to pray that now. Because I believe God is raising up a new generation. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. I thank you, God, that you are developing in us a hunger for your presence, a hunger for your word, a hunger, Father God, to know you like we've never known you before, God. Even, Father, as we get just our spirits and our mind and our heart prepared to go into this season of fasting. I thank you, Father. I thank you, God, that everything that we have spoken, Father God, is gonna come forth. I thank you that things that we've been believing and praying for, Father God, are gonna be released. I thank you, God, that there are certain, Father God, demonic spirits that have been assigned to us and to our families, Father God, that they're gonna be destroyed. They're gonna be destroyed in the name of Jesus during that time of fasting and of prayer. I thank you, God, that we're gonna be able to hear you clearly regarding decisions, Father God, that are coming up in our life. I thank you, God, that, that we're going to be, Father God, receiving that new level of power that is needed for where we're going. I thank you, God, in the name of Jesus, that you, Father God, are going to bend us and mold us and shape us, uh, Father God, on a fast forward during our fast, Father God, so that we can be prepared for what is to come, Father God. Give us the strength, Father God. Give us the strength to be, Father God, consistent in what you're asking us to do, Father, because we know that we're setting up for great things. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen? Amen. Amen. Somebody clap your hands for the Lord. And we'll go ahead and prepare our tithe and our offering before we get ready to go. I pray that you feel like you learned a little something tonight to go into our season of fasting. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand. And for those of you that join us online, we love you. We welcome you. You're such a part of our family. You're amazing. And we love to hear from you. So make sure that you uh, email me, joanne at rainfirechurch.org. And for those of you here and watching, if you want to give quickly from your phone, you can text rainfire to 779-77. You can